lovely to see you. Uh, I'm Beth Webb. I'm going to talk about stories that I was given when I went to Cameroon. And, um, oh, I was invited to teach creative writing and to run some workshops and to talk about British children's books. But while I was there, I got really, really, really distracted by the wonders of the African storytelling. It was just fantastic. So when I was going around um, Cameroon, the story that I was told more than anything was the story of how the tortoise cracked his shell. And every time I asked, um, mostly children, because this is a children's story, um, what story I must take back to England, they all said, how the tortoise cracked his shell. And they made me absolutely promise that I would take this story back and I would share it with you. So that is what I'm going to start with, how the tortoise cracked his shell. Now, a long, long time ago, when the world was new, all the animals were friends and they helped each other whenever possible. All except the tortoise. He was a lazy animal. He liked sitting in the sun and not doing very much at all. Now, the other thing about tortoise was in those days, his shell was round and smooth and quite soft and pliable, like a sort of thick raincoat. Well, as it happened, there had been a great drought and there hadn't been much food for a long, long time. Now, all the animals shared what they had and they, if somebody found some seeds, they'd tell the birds and if someone found some greens, they'd tell the tortoises and all the other animals, they just shared everything. One day, the birds were in a really, really good mood and they were twittering and singing and the tortoise said, Hey, what's the matter, birds? Why are you so happy? And they said, well, the king of the birds is going to hold a feast, specially for us. And we're going to get ready. We're going to preen our feathers. We're going to polish our beaks. And we're going to fly to this feast. It's going to be a magnificent celebration. And the tortoise said, oh, can I come? Can I come? I'm so hungry. My tummy is rattling. Can't you hear it? Burble, burble, burble. And the bird said, no, because you're not a bird. This is a bird feast. And anyway, even if we did want to take you, the feast is right up there in the sky on top of that cloud you can see up there. Oh, said Tortoise, but I am your friend, aren't I? I think I found you some seeds last week, didn't I? And the birds looked at each other. And as I said, in those days, everybody was really, really kind and really helpful. And they looked after each other. And so the birds thought, well, perhaps we ought to help tortoise. Perhaps it is the kind thing to do. And so they said, well, perhaps we could bring you some bits down or something. But, you know, there's no way we can get you up in the sky. And the tortoise says, yes, there is. Because you're always shedding feathers. If you all give me one feather and stick it to my shell, I think if I wiggle and squiggle and flap a bit and, and do that, then I'll be able to fly. And the birds looked at each other and thought, a flying tortoise? Never. But they didn't want to hurt the tortoise's feelings. And he was right, they did always have the odd feather that was spare. And so they all plucked out one feather they could spare and they glued it onto the tortoise's shell. And soon he got black feathers and brown feathers and red feathers and green feathers and orange feathers. And he looked magnificent. He looked prettier than a big posh hat at Ascot. Well, he was all very, very proud of himself with all these feathers. And there was even a peacock's feather, a long blue tail feather. And even the tiny hummingbird shared one tiny, fluffy, minute little feather, which he stuck right on the back of the tortoise's shell, just above its head. And the tortoise was so proud of himself, he strutted around and he said, look at me, don't I look gorgeous? <laughs> yes, said the birds, but I don't think you're going to be able to fly. And so the tortoise said, I think I can, I think I can. And you know, if you think really hard, you can do something, sometimes you can. 
And so he started to flap and flap and flap and flap and... And sure enough, soon he was beginning to lift himself up. And soon he was just above the ground and he flapped and he flapped and the bird said, Wow, you're doing it! But they didn't think even then he could get right on top and right up to the clouds. But they cheered him on and they clapped their wings and they squawked and they sang and they cheered and the tortoise went like this and like this and like this and like this. And then he found he really was flying. He was up above the trees and going towards the clouds and the bird said, Hey, well, we guess you're welcome at the feast. And then one of the birds said, One important thing you need to understand about these feasts is that we all have special festival names. Now the robin, for example, isn't Mr. Robin. He is the bird with the fiery breast. And the blackbird isn't Mr. or Mrs. Blackbird. It's coal blackbird or rich chocolate Mrs. Bird. And so everybody just has a special name. Tortoise thought as he flapped and flapped and flapped and said, I know. I'm going to be you all. The birds looked at him and said, you all? That's not a good festival name. You could be tortoise with the million feathers. How about that? And the tortoise said, no, no, I'm going to be you all. I've decided that is my name. The bird shrugged and said, well, it's a bit of an odd name, but anyway, you're welcome. And so he flapped and flapped and flapped and got almost up to the cloud and there it was a big soft white cloud and as they got on top of it they got closer and closer and closer and they landed you know it's like landing on the biggest softest most wonderful duvet oh, and there spread in the middle of this enormous cloud was the biggest feast you've ever seen with food you hadn't even imagined. Fruit and seeds and bread and fufu and the most wonderful spread. And the king of the birds, I'm not sure who the king of the birds were. In some stories it's the wren and in others it's the eagle. The king of the birds said, welcome friends and visitors, he said to the tortoise, welcome, welcome. This feast is for you all. Now, enjoy it. I must go now because I must fly the skies and make sure that all is well across the world. And so the birds were about to fall on the feast because their tummies were rumbling like crazy and the tortoise said, ah, ah, <coughs> excuse me, this food is for me, not for you. What do you mean? said the birds. And the tortoise said, well, my festival name is you all. And you heard your king, he said, this food is for you all. And you've all, all got other names. He with the fiery breast, he with the coal feathers, she with the lovely chocolate feathers. And and I'm afraid this feast isn't for you, it's for me, because my name is you all. The birds were livid, but their king had flown away. What could they do? They couldn't ask the king for, for wisdom on this. And so the birds just looked on in horror as the tortoise just went... <laughs> and stuffed himself until he was almost fit to burst and his shell was stretched and stretched. And then he said, I can't eat any more. You may have the scraps. And so the birds, spitting and swearing, fell on the food and shoved the last crumbs and the last remnants into their beaks. And then the tortoise sat smugly on the edge of the cloud, watching as if he was their king. And then when the birds had finished the crumbs, they turned round and said, Oh, I know what we're going to do. We're going to take the feathers back. And one by one, they flew over to the poor tortoise and went, Can't do a very good today. But they one by one took all the feathers back until there was just... Poor tortoise had one feather, one big blackbird's feather. And he said, help, 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 don't do that, I'm going to fall. How can I fly down without feathers? And the bird said, oh, that's your problem. You stole our food. And then the blackbird came up and was just about to snatch back the last feather. And they said, the tortoise said, please, 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 don't take my, my, my last feather because I'll, I'll, I'll go wee crunch. 
just give me one feather. And the blackbird looked at the feather and it was a bit of a bent feather anyway. And he said, you can keep it. And then the tortoise said, listen, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And, and I'm really, really sorry. But I beg you, just one favour. Will you go down to my wife and will you ask her to put all the cushions and duvets and pillows she can out in the back garden? And then when I fall off the cloud, then at least I'll have a soft landing. And the blackbird shrugged and said, yeah, all right, I'll go and talk to your wife. And the tortoise watched as the blackbird spread his wings and flew down and down and down, right down to tortoise's house. And then when they got there, the blackbird said, Mrs. Tortoise, Mrs. Tortoise. And she said, yes. And the blackbird said, I've got a message from your husband. He's been up with us on that cloud sharing our, our feast. But he's a bit worried about how he's going to get down because he's only got one feather. But he does think he can do it. He thinks it's a magic feather and he can fly down. And to prove he's not going to come to a sticky end, he wants you to put all sorts of stones and rocks and sharp objects in your back garden. So when he lands, he's going to prove he can land delicately and beautifully without getting hurt. And Mrs. Tortoise said, well, doesn't he want soft things? Blackbird said, well, that's what he said. I think he just wants to show off how good his flying is. Mrs. Blackbird thought, oh, well, I better do what he wants. And so she went around the garden and found sticks and stones and rocks and sharp things and put them in a big pile in the middle of the garden. And the tortoise up on the cloud couldn't see terribly well, but he knew that, miss, that his wife was doing something, putting something in the middle of the garden. He thought, oh, bless her, she's wonderful. And taking a big breath, he jumped off the cloud. And with the one feather, he went, Wee! But then a puff of wind caught him and he started going, Woo! over and over and over and over and up and down. And then, Wee! and then over and over and up and down. And Wee! over and over and up and down. Wee! <coughs> Plonk! And he landed upside down, right on the pile of rocks. Ow! He squealed. And of course, his shell cracked and he was hurt. And Mrs. Tortoise came out and said, Well, you're an idiot. You should have told me to put out uh, soft things instead of rocks. And the tortoise said, But that's what I did ask. And then he realised that the bird had actually got his own back a bit and he had been silly. Well, he wasn't hurt too badly because of the one feather and the blowing wind and Mrs. Tortoise took him in and rubbed ointment all over his shell. But from that day forward, the shell was always rather hard and cracked. It never quite healed. And when Mr. and Mrs. Tortoise had children, they all had a sort of hard shell with a cracked pattern. And I think it was to remind them always to share and never be greedy. Don't you? So, that was the really, really favourite story from Cameroon that I was told I had to bring back to the children of England. 